I've got our two heater cases here to uh, show the difference between an IHKA and an IHKR E46, E83 setup. This one's a IHKA. You can see it right there. It says IHKA on it. And this one's an IHKR. Our IHKA came out of a E46 and the IHKR came out of an E83. The IHKR is essentially the manual knobs. IHKA is the automatic with the digital um, control module. Uh, this is an early control module, so it's bigger. The later ones are, are thinner, but they're functionally the same. Uh, fundamentally, the cases are the same, as far as I can tell. The difference is the IHKA has a couple more stepper motors on this end. This would be the passenger side that control the flaps, whereas the IHKR has a much more intricate set of gears and levers as part of its actuator system. The wiring harnesses are different, obviously, because we have more stepper motors on the IHKA versus the IHKR. I don't know what happens if you just plug in an IHKR and then put the actuators on it and then reuse the IHKA harness. Uh, the motors are, I believe, on a LIN bus, and so there may be a problem with leaving some of them disconnected. But uh, so that's the main differences there. The actuator itself looks like it just bolts on in a couple of places. Uh, this mount right here and that one as well. So it may be you can just take the actuator off of this case and take the separate motors off of this case and put it right on. That's what I'm assuming. Uh, I haven't tried to do that yet, but uh, that's going to be our next step is to swap it over. You can see that this case, the flaps just are all just deteriorated, whereas this one is in pretty good shape. So we're not going to use this case. We're going to convert this IHKA case to IHKR, and that'll be the next step. So we got the uh, cover off the actuator. It still doesn't want to give up. There's some something still attached there, but it looks like this piece that goes in here was also going to block us. So that just snaps in. Actually, let me see. It goes in right here. That snaps in. This guy had to pop out to get in place. I've got the wiring disconnected, and there's a micro switch there. So we'll. Uh, continue on from here so we're off now uh, the uh, this flap actuator had to come out and then the big one was this red one here was hanging us up that goes through here for this door so that one was a little tricky to get off once we got that off we're loose now and so here's the big thing I guess with this wiring harness is we have this micro switch uh, that's part of the harness so I think that's going to be Another tricky part about doing this conversion without the harness. So I had to split the case open to get the harness out the middle because it runs along here. This goes through the front to the blower motor and it continues on to the other side where there's a stepper motor that goes up in here. And then we have the heater. Uh, I guess that's a condenser temperature sensor or EVAP, EVAP temp sensor. But uh, I'd already split this thing apart at the junkyard and pulled the heater core and the evaporator out of it so I didn't have to buy it, but that's what uh, we're looking at right here. So this is the complete disassembly to get the harness out, and then we'll move over to uh, assembling it onto the good heater case. In comparison, this guy was way easier to, uh, to remove. Just a couple of screws. Let's see, it went like this. Just a couple of screws, pop this one off, and it came right out. No big deal. So I had to pull the uh, little red actuator off of this one, like we did the other side. But the other, the manual one does not have anything in this place. This guy goes right here. Uh, it's keyed, so it's a little tricky to get it out. If it's not lined up properly, it's not coming out. So I got the harness routed in between here now. You have to split the case. Uh, just because just a few screws that hold the front to back. And then you route it over and you have to pull this stepper motor off. It looks like it's for the recirc doors. And then uh, get in there to replace the stepper motor wiring and then the EVAP temp sensor. I didn't show this before, but to get to the blower motor wiring, you have to pull this front cover with the recirc door off. Uh, you disconnect this door from the drive on the bottom by pulling up on this flap. Then there's three screws and this comes off. That's how you would replace the blower motor as well. And I guess since I got this off here, so one of the things that E46s are super common for, at least in Texas, is the evaporators leaking. 
and uh, it's pretty much I never see a car that doesn't have a leaking evaporator to some extent. So doing this in the car, this retrofit, yeah, you could probably do it. Maybe, I don't know, it looks pretty terrible to do in the car, but the chances are that it's going to need an evaporator anyways. So pulling it all out, do the evaporator, do the retrofit, put it all back together. But the one way you can tell pretty easily is if it needs an evaporator. If you pull the cover off the front here, it's got uh, one screw at the top, and then it's got two metal clips, and you can do this with everything in the car. You do it from the engine bay side. But if you look in here, I got my light on it. If you look in, well, you can see the cobwebs right there. Let me clear the cobwebs out. Look down in there, you can see the evaporator. If you look closely, you can see it looks like it's got some fuzz on the actual evaporator towards the middle there, right behind the, right below the light. And what happens is the evaporators will leak, oil will get onto the front of the condenser there, and, or the evaporator, and it'll stick dirt and debris and stuff like that. So that's pretty much a clear sign that things they got a bad evaporator in it. So I put it back together as is now, but before I swap this in the car, I'll pull it back apart and I will swap this evaporator out. It's got the heater case all back together. Everything looks good. It all went together like I expected it to. There wasn't anything that caught me off guard as far as the reassembly goes and all the last little finishing touches. Uh, I imagine it's gonna work just fine. We won't know until we get it back in the car. That's not gonna be for a while, but uh, at least we kind of know what we're up to when it comes to retrofitting the IHKR into an IHKA car. Uh, there's gonna be some coding that goes along with it to make it work completely seamlessly, but as far as functionality, it should work just fine now. Uh, the next little bit of video is going to be showing the access inside the car. I shot that before I disassembled this. So knowing what I know now, you could probably replace it in the car, but it's probably gonna be a terrible job. And at that point, pulling it out, doing the evaporator, maybe doing the heater core if you feel like it, it's gonna make more sense. So hopefully this helps and uh, good luck with the retrofit. So if you want to get the actuators and everything off of a heater case, this guy is going to come off, come off right here. So the dash has to come out of the car. And uh, from there, I don't think there's probably going to be enough room to get this whole assembly out of the, the car with the dash frame in place. Maybe, but it looks like it's pretty terrible. And to be honest with you, if you're at this point in the disassembly, uh, taking the dash bar out isn't that much more work. Uh, you're going to have to change the, the harness, and you can't really change the harness with all this assembled anyway. So I think the best way would be to pull the heater case completely out of the car. Then you have plenty of room to work on the actuator itself, and then you can also just replace the, uh, the, the heater case harness, which is what we need for the D-retrofit as well. With the dash frame out, you can see we have tons of room in here now to do all the work we need to do. The, uh, the harness still runs in between the firewall and the heater case to get to the stepper motor on the driver's side, and then also to the wiring going to the blower motor. Um, those could be potentially, maybe you would chop up this original harness and uh, retrofit it, and then you would have to pull the heater case out. Uh, but at this point, to get the heater case out, just a couple of screws disconnecting the coolant, but unfortunately I have to pull the refrigerant out of it to get the uh, heater case out. With that said, most E46s need an evaporator if they, ever, if they ever have not had one. So it may be a good excuse to put a new evaporator in it at the same time. But uh, this is a good visualization of where it's all gonna go.